Good evening and welcome to a special Friday edition of The Last Word, focusing on defendant Trump. Donald Trump has not come up with a magical solution to prevent New York's Attorney General Letitia James from beginning the process of attaching his assets on Monday in order to guarantee the payment of a $464 million civil fraud judgment against Donald Trump. The merger announced today between Donald Trump's social media company with a much higher valued company called the Digital World Acquisition Corporation can do nothing to change Donald Trump's financial capacities on Monday when Donald Trump hits the deadline for satisfying the judgment against him. If Donald Trump had $464 million, he could just post it with the court as a guarantee that he could cover the judgment if he loses his appeal of the case. But Donald Trump doesn't have that much money, despite claiming to have had much more than that for many, many years now. And Donald Trump has not been able to get anyone to lend him that money so that he could post a bond with the court for the judgment, which would then protect his assets. The court gave Donald Trump 30 days to figure this out and he hasn't been able to. And so now, as financial reality closes in on him, Donald Trump goes to bed lying and wakes up lying. Last night at 1.54 a.m., he posted one of his familiar lies on social media, saying that the judgment against him was unconstitutional and unfair, and that it was designed by the judge to, quote, not allow me to use any of the large amount of cash I have built up over the years through hard work, insight, instinct, and diligence on my political campaign for president. So, the lie there is that Donald Trump does not have hundreds of millions of dollars, just doesn't have it, and the lie that he was going to spend that money on his political campaign. That is a complete and total lie. Donald Trump has never spent one penny of his own money on any of his political campaigns. In his first campaign for president, after promising that he would finance his entire campaign himself and would never ask anyone to donate to his campaign, Donald Trump loaned a total of $10.8 million to his campaign to get it started. And then he quickly began begging for money every day of his life online to his supporters. And when his supporters sent in enough money, Donald Trump paid himself back the $10 million that he loaned to his campaign. So no, Donald Trump was not hoarding large amounts of cash, hundreds of millions of dollars, so that he could spend that money on his political campaign. As he said just before 2 a.m. last night, and then, when he woke up this morning, if he slept at all, at 7.14 a.m., Donald Trump repeated that lie, saying, I currently have almost $500 million in cash, a substantial amount of which I intended to use in my campaign for president. No, he did not. He has never intended to use one penny of his own money in his campaign. And saying that he now has almost $500 million in cash would mean that his lawyers were lying when they told the judge at the beginning of the week that it was, quote, an impossibility. That was their word, an impossibility for Donald Trump to come up with $500 million in cash. Trump's lawyers actually called that, quote, a practical impossibility. The Trump lawyers explained to the court just how thoroughly Donald Trump failed in coming up with the money. The lawyers said, quote, these diligent efforts have included approaching about 30 surety companies through four separate brokers, a bond requirement of this enormous magnitude, effectively requiring cash reserves approaching $1 billion, is unprecedented for a private company. So, in a Manhattan courtroom on Monday, the foundational lie of Donald Trump's image building as a politician will be exposed. I don't need anybody's money. It's nice. I don't need anybody's money. I'm using my own money. I'm not using the lobbyists. I'm not using donors. I don't care. I'm really rich. That was an enormous part of Donald Trump's initial appeal when he began as a candidate. He mounted other appeals, including direct appeals to racists to expand his base of support. But many Trump voters in Iowa 
believed then and said then in interviews that the Trump wealth that they believed he had was a virtue. They believed he would be incorruptible because he had too much money already to be corrupted. Donald Trump was lying about that. And his voters were wrong to believe it. But they have forgiven or overlooked every Trump lie that has been exposed. And so at the end of the day on Monday, most of them might still be willing to believe that Donald Trump is as rich as he has always pretended to be. But Donald Trump knows better. And Donald Trump has proved how rich he isn't to anyone who can think. The world's famous billionaires have no problem coming up with $500 million. Jeff Bezos has that in his pocket. Bill Gates has given away more money than Donald Trump has ever had in his life. Bill Gates has given away billions of dollars. And the real billionaire New York politician, former mayor of New York, Mike Bloomberg, who has also given away billions of dollars, never brags about his wealth. He could easily cover a sudden bill of $500 million at any time from his current holdings of $106.2 billion. Mike Bloomberg started with nothing, grew up in suburban Boston, moved to New York City, had to work to make every single penny he has earned, had to do it on his own. Donald Trump hates billionaires like Mike Bloomberg, who came to the big city where Donald Trump was born rich and left Donald Trump far behind in the building of important businesses and the accumulation of wealth that staggers Donald Trump's poisoned imagination. Donald Trump has never dared to even pretend that he is as rich as Mike Bloomberg, never mind the younger men like Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos who have hit the stratospheric level of wealth that Donald Trump seethes with jealousy about every day of his life. The drama Donald Trump is living through now, the drama he's living through tonight, the drama that we are all watching, was foretold when the presidential election was called for Joe Biden and Donald Trump officially entered the history books as a loser. On that day, Peter Marks, the drama critic of the Washington Post, wrote, I imagine it as a chilling final turn of the plot. His world is coming to an end. He will never have another good day. Loser label will haunt him. The law will pursue him. Mental illness will hobble him. His properties will bankrupt him.